MCTs burn up and break down fast. They get into our system fast. It's what makes them so popular. What's what makes them so unique right now. And it's why they're so popular with the low carb craze, simply because they can turn into ketones quick. But this awesome, awesome stuff that happens with MCTs comes at a little bit of a cost. And sometimes that's cramping. Sometimes that a little bit of an upset stomach. If you've ever consumed MCT oil and you've gotten that weird constricting feeling, it almost feels like your intestines are like constricting and cramping. Then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's break down why this happens, but more importantly, let's talk about some solutions that you can use to still get the benefits of MCTs, but without the cramping. I'll give you some ways that you can combine MCTs with other oils and even with some foods that'll help change how MCTs treat your body. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. If you hit that little bell button, you can turn on notifications. That way you'll get a little ding whenever I go live or post a new video. Also, make sure you check out highly.com for the latest and greatest premium performance apparel that I'm always wearing in my videos. So there are links down in the description. You can check them out. Let's go ahead and let's break some stuff down. In order to understand why MCTs cause a potential problem, we have to understand how normal fats are digested first because MCTs, they're an anomaly. So long chain triglycerides or regular long chain fats have a pretty complex digestive process. The simple fact of the matter is, is that fats are never really digested. They're more so just emulsified because if you were to mix up some oil and water, it's never gonna really break down. You can whip it up and get it into really small bubbles, but you're not gonna ever really break it down. Same thing kinda happens in your body until it's at the cellular level. So what happens is you consume a regular fat. It goes into your stomach and then it drops into your small intestine. When it drops in your small intestine, it triggers the release of a specific thing called cholecystokinin. What this cholecystokinin does is it triggers a cascade of events that break down the fats. So the CCK, first of all, makes us feel satiated. So we love it, right? It makes us feel full. But the CCK also triggers pancreatic lipase. So it triggers fat breaking down enzymes. So these enzymes that come from the pancreas that help break down fats. Okay, but it also triggers the gallbladder to release bile which breaks down fats. So what happens is the fats start to break down. They come in as triglycerides, they break down into free fatty acids, and then what happens is the bile salts come in and they break down those free fatty acids into something known as micelles. So it breaks them down into these really teeny, teeny pieces and they aggregate into micelles. The micelles then enter the cells that are in our small intestine and inside the cell of our small intestine, they reform back to a triglyceride and then get dumped into our lymphatic system where they turn into cliomicrons and then they finally get broken down again and again and eventually they end up giving us fat as a fuel source, right? So eventually they're gonna get into the mitochondria and give us energy. The point is, there's a lot going on. It's not like it's simply eating it and it gets absorbed. It goes through a multi-phase emulsification system. Okay, so now we know that complex model. Now let's take a look at what happens with MCTs and tell me if you recognize any difference here. I consume MCTs, goes into my stomach, then it drops into my small intestine. No cholecystokinin is released. No bile is released. It goes in, it doesn't even enter as a micelle. It doesn't even really enter the enterocyte. It goes through passive diffusion and enters my body. Like it enters my bloodstream. And then once it enters the bloodstream, MCTs are so fast that they go right into the mitochondria. Like normally our cells require carnitine to let fat in. That's why L-carnitine is such a popular fat burning supplement because it's supposed to allow fat to get into the cell better. MCTs don't even require L-carnitine. They like have this VIP backstage pass to everything in our body where they just go to the front of the line. Think of it like a Disneyland fast pass. They just go to the front always. Why they get preferential treatment, I have zero idea. The fact is because they're shorter chains of fat, they just have to skip that process. They can just go right in. So this of course comes with a cost. They digest fast, so we're not getting the actual things that help slow them down. They're just going through passive diffusion and absorb right away. Now, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published a study that proved this. So what they did is they took a look at six test subjects and they had them consume either 60 millimoles of MCTs or 60 millimoles of long chain triglycerides, regular fats. And they wanted to measure to see if there was any CCK response. Well, what they found is those that consumed the long chain fatty acids that ended up consuming the LCTs, well, they had a reduction in gallbladder size indicating that the gallbladder was releasing bile, but they also had a decent increase in CCK. Okay, so they saw a correlation there. Then with the MCT group, no change in gallbladder size. So the gallbladder didn't even release any bile, but then no change 
in CCK. It didn't even trigger CCK response. So the downside is that means that you're not going to have any satiety, but the other downside is it's going to absorb so fast it's going to give you a cramp. And that's exactly what's happening. So on one hand, it's cool because it's absorbing fast, but on the other hand, it's cramping you. So how do we fix this? Okay, the simplest thing is MCTs straight up are not the greatest. Like there's no real solid benefit to just taking MCTs without other fats along with them. So you might as well consume coconut oil. I mean, MCTs taste great and they're easy and they're quick energy, but coconut oil contains a good amount of MCTs, but they also contain long chain fats and lauric acid. So that means you're still getting the benefit of the MCTs. The MCTs aren't attached to the other fats. So if I take a spoonful of coconut oil and I eat it, the MCTs are gonna be separate from the rest of the fats. The MCTs are still gonna absorb super fast, I'm still gonna get the benefit, but at least the long chain fats from the coconut oil are gonna at least trigger the cholecystokinin, so I'm satiated. And they're also going to trigger the pancreatic lipase, and they're also gonna trigger the bile reaction. So we get a win-win. We get the MCTs to get absorbed, but then we also get the lauric acid and the coconut oil longer chain fats that trigger the other hormonal responses and enzymatic responses. Problem solved, win-win. We still get the quick energy. The other thing that you can do is reduce your FODMAP foods. Okay, so FODMAP stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. So basically what they are, are there certain vegetables and some fruits that end up breaking down in a unique way where they basically make these specific sugars that cause bloating, right? Well, it causes the similar cramping because of passive diffusion with FODMAP foods that would occur with MCTs. So if you reduce your FODMAP foods, your FODMAP overall levels, you can improve this. But the other thing that I was gonna say is that if you add MCTs into your diet, put them over low FODMAP foods. So like drizzle them on a little bit of zucchini. That's one of my favorite things to do. Take some zucchini, drizzle some MCT oil on it, put some spices on it. You get the benefit of the MCTs, but the overall fiber and the low FODMAP nature of the zucchini and stuff like that is gonna make it so you don't get the cramps as much. So you can Google low FODMAP foods and get a whole list if you wanted to do that. So lastly, one of the things that you can do is eat more in the way of fermented veggies and fermented foods in general. All this is gonna do is it's gonna help stimulate some more digestion. So these fermented veggies by themselves are gonna trigger the release of different enzymes in and of themselves. Plus, you're adding these enzymes into your diet. So it at least helps the process and could stop some of the quick breakdown when it comes down to those cramps that you get from the MCT oil. So I know this wasn't the end all be all. Honestly, MCT oil is always gonna be MCT oil. And the more that we consume it in powder form and stuff like that, the faster we're absorbing it, the faster these problems are gonna hit us. The thing is, it's not harmful. It just makes us a little nauseous and a little crampy, but in time it goes away and you still get the benefit. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you in the next video.